appreciate it. So we're pretty much what I'm trying to do is to pick in some people. So today we are discussing um, tactics for landing job during COVID-19. So it's very important that we ping in here people that will be interested that need to be here today. So thank you all so much for joining. So um, there are a couple of things that I also want to point out. Um, we used to run this room every Friday and Sunday, but for now we'll be doing it on Sunday at 4 p.m. So at this time on Sunday we'll be here. So I thank Kerry, C and Robert for joining us. So um, I'm just gonna do a quick intro. Uh, welcome to Temp, Temp and Powerhouse. Uh, we're always there, like I said, Sunday, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Please uh, follow the room and follow the moderator so we can um, notify you of upcoming events and also um, ping in people that you think they need to be here. A quick intro. Um, my name is Temi Akimumi. I'm the CEO of Talk Group Technologies. We're a tech company located in Lago, Maryland. I've been in tech for about 26 years and I've had this company for over 16 years. Right now, I've mentored over a thousand plus engineer. I'm a tech um, leader, IT trainer. I'm also a mentor and a career coach. So you're welcome, you can follow me. And also you can look under my link tree if you have any questions and also follow me on LinkedIn as well if you're willing to do that. So thank you all so much. I will allow my uh, moderators to introduce themselves, Kari and Robert and C. Hi everyone, uh, this is Kate Pozesnik with Quirk Personal Branding and Career Consulting. I help people stop hating Mondays. Um, and essentially I help people, um, particularly in the IT profession, advance their careers. And I do that by providing resume and LinkedIn development, uh, job search strategy, interviewing preparation, as well as job offer negotiation. And the foundation of my business is really built around authenticity. And I know that buzzword gets tossed around quite a bit, um, but let's say being your most genuine self and the result I truly believe is attracting uh, the right opportunities, jobs, and people into our lives. So uh, this is Kate and I'm finished speaking. Happy to be here. Thank you, Katie. We pass it to C. This is C. I have a project management, program management, product management. I think I may have said it already, project management. I'm here to help. Um, I have a lot of insight and experience with uh, interviewing with saying organizations, just breaking into tech in general, um, you know, uh, developing a marketable resume, uh, developing a presence, branding yourself a value track proposition to attract the right, um, I would say, opportunities. So I'm here to help. Uh, you can follow me, you can DM me, you can just come up to the stage or ask questions here. And that's it for me. See, I'm done speaking. Thank you, C. We really appreciate you coming here to support us. Robert, you are next. Please introduce yourself. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Robert. I am a, like, uh, like C, I'm actually a, a project manager as well. But I've got a senior project manager. I've got background in a couple of different industries as well as experience working at Global 100 and Fortune 100 companies. And again, you know, like everyone else, I'm really here to help. I'm actually going through uh, my own pivot into tech as well as, you know, the LinkedIn, um, kind of the LinkedIn networking and all of the other things that I think you hear people talking about these days. So I think I had an accelerated uh, course in that from about uh, late January of this year to now, and definitely seen a lot of things uh, in a good way for myself. And I'd certainly love to help out however I can and, and share those where, wherever it's helpful. Thank you, and I'm, I'm Robert and I'm done. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert, we appreciate you. Team, welcome. Can you please introduce yourself? Hey everybody, this is Tim. I'm a customer success manager uh, for a small uh, construction, uh, commercial general construction contracting company. Uh, I pivoted hard uh, back in November last year. Uh, so the topic I want to relate to today is tactics landing a job during COVID. I did that. Uh, I pivoted again real hard from events. I was with a company, a very large company, in fact, uh, for about 20 years. 
uh, in the convention industry that really got shut down on March 7th last year. We all know that. So I landed a position as a customer success manager, um, been there for four months, and I'm here to ask questions, uh, answer questions, learn, and really enjoy the next hour or so. Uh, with that, I'm done, and I'll pass the mic. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Tim. Yeah, C2M, Christopher, please introduce yourself. Christopher, are you? Okay, maybe he's doing something. Okay, we'll get back to that. So today we're discussing um, tactics of landing jobs during COVID-19. We know that the normal tradition of getting a job, of applying for a job and then getting a job, it doesn't work like that anymore, okay? <laughs> With COVID-19, the impact on career paths, it has been massive, okay? And so many people, the pandemic has altered your current plan. You already have a plan set up, but then boom, everything has changed. It's caused by this pandemic. There's a slight change. Some, there are permanent change, you know, to their job search. So the pandemic has shifted some entire team, you know, some entire office, some entire company has closed down. They are shut down because of this pandemic. So. Normally we have daily interaction, but right now everybody work remotely. Everybody set up remotely, maybe temporarily or permanently. So there's so much data out there showing the effects of this, you know, pandemic. I did some research, uh, some like according to Star Stanford University, um, Nicholas Bloom said 42% of American labor force right now working remotely. He said 26% work on the premises. They are mostly essential workers. And the remaining 30% 30, 30 are not working at all. So now, when we look at it, right? There are jobs, but some people are not getting those jobs. What are they missing? What are the tips that will guide them to get those jobs? What are the mistakes they are making? So that's what we're gonna be discussing today. There are remote jobs. Remote jobs are available. There are new career paths available. The opportunities to even turn your hobbies into a profitable venture. These are all available, but people are not doing anything. Most people are not, don't know how to navigate that and don't know how to get to move forward. So today we're gonna to be looking at a lot of those tips. What are the things that we are missing? What are the things that we need to look at so that we can easily get a job? So it's, it's gonna be a pop concert. We can all chime in and discuss it. So, but that's where we're going today. So I think Tim wanna say something. Tim, yeah, yeah. Thank you guys. Let me start off with some, some actually tactical, excuse me, tactical advice, maybe uh, key learnings that I've been through. I'm not here to, as a consultant, I'm not here to push a project or be a career coach or anything like that. I just wanna make that clear. Uh, I came from a background in event management. I, again, my industry was pretty much crushed. It's growing back, which is a good sign. So how do you market yourself to pivot into a different industry? Everybody, there's a ton of content online for free, whether it's YouTube, there's a growing community of networking opportunities and customer success in the field that I'm in, in tech. There's so many people out there that are willing to support and help with no cost. And it's going to take some time and effort. What I did as an example, when I was on furlough last year, I pretty much asserted myself and made it a full-time job to look for a job right? 7 a.m., 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, period. Done. You have to do it. You got to coach yourself. You got to grade yourself. Uh, get a scorecard. Look at companies that you're going to align to. It's tough. Not easy, especially if you're coming from a different industry. And it's not like I'm right out of college, you know, mid-20s and 30s. I'm talking 20 years deep 
in an industry that I've been at and was doing a great job at. And so saw an opportunity to pivot into the SaaS, which is a software as a service field, which is growing extremely well right now. Uh, but again, if you just focus on the available content that's out there, network, there's a bunch of YouTube videos, really learn. You can't teach somebody how much to want it, right? Um, in a way, you have to kind of teach somebody how to fish. And so a couple of the opportunities that I had was, again, just 7 a.m., 5 p.m., looking at different opportunities and networking with each other, uh, joining some different communities, leveraging your network from past experiences and really doing a self assessment and scorecard. And uh, I'm open to talking about that further. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tim. That's you are really right on point. That's great. Yes, very important to have a score card and then use that to score yourself and see how you are improving and how you are going about with the pathway that you lay down. It's, it takes a lot of discipline. Um, if you can do that diligently, you will really get the, res re um, uh, the result out of it. So thank you so much for that. Uh, any other inputs as we go on? Okay, so I'll just continue then for now. So one of my, the first tip I would discuss is don't adopt a tunnel vision. So don't think um, everything's gonna be like, you're closing your mind into maybe one or two job search um, and that's it, no. Um, I want us to always have an open mind. Don't close your mind and just don't have a myopic view about the job search process. It might be, it might take a long time, but you have to start somewhere. So um, always ap apply your experience and ability to address the company current needs. Most of the time we have some transferable skills. We have a lot of experience and it may not be exactly what we're looking for. For example, you might try to, you are looking for a job as a, a project manager, but you found a job as a product manager. It might be close, but that's not what you are looking for. Oh, because of what is going on now, if, if the pay is good and you kind of like it, but that's not what you're looking for, you might have to settle with that. So don't close yourself. Don't put yourself in a box. Think out, think out of the box. So have an open mind towards your job search process. And when you submit your application, include the notes on it. And if possible, clearly state which of the skills you can transfer to the current role, you know, and don't get too tied down to anything. Just be like flexible, be flexible, work with whatever current positions that are available to you. Because even though in tech, many positions, I mean, especially in cybersecurity, we know that there's tons of positions. Some other areas, even in, in, in like coding, programming, there are tons of jobs, but then some some opportunities, some positions, we don't have a whole lot. So if you are in those kind of position for right now, then work with what you have in those in those roles. Work with what you have. Something close. Uh, if you are discussing about maybe, um, you know, programming with HTML and CSS and stuff like that, but you don't really know that much, but you know a little bit. Well, if they're ready ready to train you, why not? Give it a shot. You know things like that. So don't have a don't have a tunnel vision, of have an open mind. So that's one of the major thing, because I said, oh, I don't really want to do that right now. I really want to focus on this right now. But if you can't find anything, because of COVID, because something happened, those kind of jobs are kind of not available for now. Make sure you know the market, know what the market is saying at this time because of the situation, the pandemic. See if you see have a lot of opportunity in those area. If you don't have enough opportunities in those area, then you have to start thinking out of the box. How do I pivot? How do I switch to another career that is more lucrative? So all of these things will really help as we, um, you know, as we try to, you know, move post COVID. Right now we're seeing COVID situation. So start thinking out of the box and don't have a tunnel mentality. 
Another thing I always tell my student is that they should search for jobs more. Don't wait until a recruiter calls you. Um, consistently search for job daily, daily. I'll tell my student, I said, search for job, like 10 jobs a day, 10 jobs a day, play with it. Go around and just search, just download these apps on your, on your phone and just on lunchtime search, when you're in the bathroom search, when you are, you know, just search, just play with it. And, uh, and the rest will be history. So I said, check jobs, job boards daily, go online, check it. Don't only check on, um, on LinkedIn, on um, Glassdoor, on um, Indeed, go on those companies' websites. Many companies don't put their jobs on Indeed. Like these big tech companies I used to work for, they don't put their jobs on website. They have it on their way or their own. They don't put it on Indeed. They have their own recruiters and they have their own database. So I always provide the list of this to my student. I said, go on this website, put your resume on their database and search for job on their database. So don't only limit yourself to Indeed and Monster and Dice and all of that. So search out, reach out to the recruiters, the coordinators, the hiring manager, submit application to them. Don't wait until they submit, they call you or that. And if they call you, make sure you respond back the call. Some people don't respond back any calls. They don't respond back, they just, they'll be, they'll be telling me, oh, I'm, I was at the job, I can't pick the calls. My manager, your manager, well, you have break time. So whenever you have break time, return to those, respond those calls because some, some um, opportunities, they need to close like next day. So, so don't wait because sometimes when you call back, it might be too late. Right now, they are really looking for people when if they are looking for people. So when they call you, make sure you respond back and check your network, like maybe for former employers, your colleagues, you know, check with them and see if they have any open positions that they can refer you, promising companies that they can refer you to and just do this diligently, consistently. If you can do this diligently and consistently, and sometimes you can be obnoxious, just apply, just keep applying. Let this recruiting manager see your application like every day. <laughs> if they are allowed to you know, apply today, then tomorrow apply again, they'll be like, who is this to me? Let me, let me check out who this person is. And you know, and that will get you a job. Just, just, just continue to apply. So I mean, so I think this are uh, one of some of the points that I find very important to, to our job seekers. So I will stop right there. If anyone wants to echo anything or chime in, or yes, right. Love that. And uh, one of the things that works for me, this is Tim. You know, it's tough to just apply and just wait, right? Yes. But if you can reach out to a hiring manager and be prepared with a problem solve, for example, you know, instead of just saying, hey, can we connect? Like provide a link, an article, or something that can solve their problem in their company, or a use case, something very similar, uh, something that they're challenged with. Help them solve their problem. You know, there's a lot of competition out there. If you can put in the work, even before you actually connect with them, that's what's going to set yourself apart. I've done that. There's a couple of people out there that you can you know, follow on LinkedIn that have five really good examples um, that can, you can show and, and follow. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you can solve problems for someone and make their lives easier and their jobs easier every day, isn't that what they're looking for, right? Let's really just break it down to being simple. How can you help them? How can, again, you have to ask that, how can you help them achieve their goals instead of just going through the normal interview process. Even before you get to that point, solve their problems before you even have the opportunity to interview. This is Tim and uh, I'm passing the mic. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Robert, yeah. Do you want to say, do you have any input? Uh, yes, Tim? actually, uh, I just want to throw it down. I actually am driving in, so hopefully you can hear me okay. So, um, so I'm definitely going to agree um, 
with what Tim's saying, and I was going to share one of the things that I've done, which was to actually, you know, when you're in an interview, it, it's a two-way conversation, and you need to remember that. And one of the things you need to have in mind is you definitely need to do research, which I know everyone says, but what I did specifically was I actually looked at who it was that I was interviewing with. I looked them up on LinkedIn. I found out if they had been speaking at conferences or other things, you know, what is it that's important to them or what things are they kind of speaking about that are leading technologies or things that are of interest. And I wanted to make sure that I could research and understand and ask questions about those things because it does set you apart. So just like Tim says, being able to go in and interview and say, I've got skills, I mean, that's great. But what you really want them to know is, you know what, we've got a need and you are the person that we want to come help us solve these problems. And so definitely knowing what's important to a company, what's important to the individuals who interview you is going to set you apart, especially if you can ask questions about what are the challenges or what are the things that they want or are most excited about in the near term and what are their big projects. Because with the more you can speak to that and show that you're excited and you can help, it really is going to set you apart. Because again, everyone's got skills and background, but you want to be different. And so that's one way to definitely set yourself apart is to know enough to be able to ask those right questions. Um, and doing your research about those people in the company is a great way to do that. So I'm Robert. I'm Robert and I'm done. Thank you, Robert. We really appreciate it. Very, very important. Yes. Thank you. Anna, just join us, Dan and Alexandra. Can you please introduce yourselves? <laughs> thank you, Ms. Sammy. Hi, everyone. My name is Anna and I'm a project manager career coach. So thank you so much, um, Ms. Sammy, for this room. Um, I just wanted to quickly say uh, I really I, I agree with you about the connections part because, um, you know, this past year was difficult for a lot of people, especially because it was unexpected. Uh, people lost their jobs and things like that. But now, uh, hopefully, things are turning around and, and people are starting to land jobs, and especially in the project management space where I help women, um, I'm seeing that a lot. Um, so when you talked about the power of networking, you know, at the end of the day, it's you versus you. You're the one who needs to advocate for yourself, even as much as people can network for you and support you and let you know that, you know, there's a position here and there. It's you. Um, you know, uh, putting yourself out there because you, you need to be aggressive in some of these things and trying to, especially if you're trying to land a job in a specific company or things like that. So the power of networking. Um, sometimes even some of these companies, as Ms. Temi said, they don't advertise their positions on, on LinkedIn or on job boards. You need to network. You need to find out what's the hidden jobs out there that someone in your network can refer you to. And then from there, um, you know, you can apply even directly from the website and things like that. Tailor your resume, as Robert said. Make sure it's standing out. You just don't want to be like the next person who, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, who has done the same thing as you. But you, what's making you stand out? What, uh, what achievements can you show up? What kind of quantifiable items can you can you wow the company with? What can you talk about? Things about things? Things like that. Yeah. I encourage people to you know, don't be afraid to Anna, we Anna. Yeah, we can okay. hear you. There we oh. go. That's better. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to encourage people, like, don't lose hope if you are in the job market. Um, you know, things are hopefully are turning around, especially at least in the U.S. market. Um, your job is out there, but at, at the end of the day, also you, you need to advocate yours for yourself. You need to get out there and start searching and networking with the right people. This is Anna, and I'm done speaking. I, I would even jump in. Sorry, this is, this is Kate speaking. I would even come over top of what Anna said. And I think Robert may have mentioned this too about networking is even if you're not currently job searching, everyone, all of us, self-employed, employed, corporate world, whatever, should be networking all year round regardless. Because, I mean, we've all kind of seen the result is if you're not prepared, it can be really scary. Um, and, and being in the job seeking market is a little less scary when you're prepared and you already have a network warmed up and ready to help you should you need the help. Um, so that would be the one key point I'd like to make here is regardless of whether or not you're job searching, you should always be networking. Um, and it doesn't have to be anything crazy. It could be, hey, let's catch up for a 15 minute Zoom coffee meeting or um, sending them an email on their birthday and being like, hey, what's up? Here's what's going on, you know, that might be helpful to you. So it doesn't have to be anything extravagant, but making those touch points can be really uh, critical and helpful when you do find yourself in a, in a position to be job seeking. 
And this is Robert. I was actually just going to point out something, Kate, because I think, you know, you're, you're a big advocate of this, and I think quite a few people are as well. Of, um, I think you probably, I guess maybe people call it intentional networking, right? So, like, there's a proper way to connect with people. So don't don't send them a resume or say, hey, do you have a position for me? And that's somebody's opening message. And like, oh, wait, I don't know, I don't know you. I, I'm not really, a, I'm not a hiring manager, so why are you sending me this? And I'm actually hearing, as I see more and more, um, I remember, you know, someone sharing a post the other day where they had a thousand LinkedIn in, 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 you know, message or a connection request. Uh, it was just over a thousand, and of those, you know, single digit percentage of the people actually put a note. And so her way of filtering her inbox was if you didn't send them, if you didn't have a note or some explanation, it was like, you know, I'm just deleting, my, you know, I'm not going to accept your request. And so I think we need to be mindful of that as, as well. Um, you know, the connection is not just a transaction, it's trying to invest in people and building a relationship. And you definitely don't want to do that when you're looking for a job necessarily. The more you can do that ahead of time, like Kate says, it is a full-time thing because then when you're in the position where you need it, then people know who you are and then they can say, oh, you know what, I heard about this job, let me help you out. And they're gonna be really willing to do that. But if you approach them for the first time and it's almost like it's too much, um, that can actually just get people to kind of push away from you and it just doesn't work. So I just wanted to point that out because I know I've heard Kate and others really uh, point out that there's a, a good way to do that and then maybe a, a not so great way, so. This is C. So um, I've been listening to everyone and I think uh, a lot of good information has been shared thus far, but um, we're living in non-traditional times. Um, so, you have to, um, in this day and time, you have to step out of your box. Um, I don't think anything mentioned so far is um, doesn't bring value. I think it's great, but I think the key thing is having a strategy. You know, when you are in a position where if you need to obtain a job, I think the first thing that you have to think about is your plan. What is going to be your strategy? Uh, what resources do you currently have? Uh, doing the research to determine what direction you actually want to take for your job search. What type of employment you're seeking. Are you seeking full-time, part-time? Like, there's just so many variables that you first have to, like, iron out and outline. Because in beginning your search, you will become very overwhelmed if you're trying to go about it the traditional way in a very non-traditional time that we're living in. Now things are so fast pace. Uh, people are mainly online with various platforms. Um, you know, the approach to, you know, network with one individual is going to vary from the other. I mean, it's just re really too much to like kind of um, take on at one time. So I think the focus really begins with yourself. Um, determining what you want out of your job search, what is your timeline, uh, what are your resources. Obviously, you should always network on a regular basis. That kind of um, removes the, um, the potential of you running into individuals who are not going to read your DMs or who are not going to respond to a submission of your application if it's a direct link. Um, or if you do come in a search, we're just going to overlook you. So first of all, establishing your digital presence um, and making sure that is strong, up to date, and really, um, I would say, present your value proposition instantly is key. And when I say these words, just so that you know what I'm speaking about, making sure that your profile, no matter what platform you are on, instantly when someone views your profile they know what you're about so if you're a graduate you know seeking a job opportunity is clear um if you're someone with um you know just a few years of experience but you have some goals or you have an objective to you know join a certain industry or get into a certain type of role it's clearly you know, explained or described in your profile. If you're targeting a certain industry or certain types of roles, it's clearly defined. So there's a lot of work that you have to initially put in to just build your presence, build your value proposition. Um, make sure that your profile on all platforms is exactly what you want it to say. 
so that it doesn't take a recruit at any time to determine if you're the right fit. Because as they're searching for candidates and as you're doing your search, you want to make sure you're connecting with the right people. And that will kind of eliminate those who are filtering through their, you know, messages of who left the note or who different did it. I mean, honestly, like the time that that takes to me tells me a lot about that individual. Um, but it all depends on the type of organization you want to join. Another, the next step is, you know, looking at job opportunities that when you read the job description and you're reading the job requirements, and that's what you should first zoom in on. I mean, it's great all the other information, but you want to see initially if you meet the requirements. Because if you don't meet at least a minimum, the minimum requirements, you know right then and there, like your possibilities of getting that job opportunity are very slim. So that's the next step. And then in terms of applying, um, you know, you can do it at your pace. You know, if you need to apply for 10 jobs per day, that's really not going to determine whether or not you're going to get a job opportunity. I'm going to just tell you that from my experience. You could apply for a million jobs per day. That's not going to determine. The key thing here is not just networking, it's building relationships building relationships with individuals, whether they're hiring managers, whether they're employees, whether they're recruiters in organizations, plain and simple. I, I don't care if it's a startup, if it's corporate, if it's tech, but you have to build relationships and you have to force to them. You don't need to send someone, uh, you know, a message or a DM about their birthday. It's kind of a little awkward. Um, we don't have a personal relationship. And even if we did, I don't really think I want you sending me, you know, uh, a birthday message on a social platform, you know, that that would take place on more of a, a personal level. Um, a phone call or something would be a better gesture. So things that you want to do is if they're posting content, go in, make a comment, make sure your comment has value. Okay. Make sure that it aligns with the topic. Make sure it aligns with your expertise, whether you're a subject matter expert or not. The key thing here is to stand out and shine anytime you have an opportunity to engage. If you're, for example, if you're in the audience right now and you're seeking a job opportunity and one of the moderators says to the audience, if anyone has a question, would you like to come up? If you are very determined to, um, you know, build a relationship, uh, gain a connection, you should not just sit in the audience silently. I mean, that right there is the wrong move. Um, Moving, jumping a little bit forward in terms of the job search, make sure you're given the best representation of yourself at all times. Social media platforms, profiles, make sure your resume is up to date. Make sure the formatting, the grammar, make sure it is speaking to the best part of you and what you bring to the table. Achievements are great, but sometimes achievements are not very appealing to certain jobs, certain roles, certain organizations. So make sure you do your research on an organization. Make sure you connect or at least follow individuals that belong to that organization that are posting content on different social media platforms. So you could gain a stronger sense of not just the organization, but the type of people that they hire. So you could get a better sense of the culture fit. The whole goal here and in getting a job is to connect with the individual that could possibly connect you with the person who could give you the job opportunity who's making a hiring decision or who can put you in front of the first person that's a part of that process. This is C and I'm done speaking for now. Wow, thank you so much C, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. That's a lot of information, really appreciate that. So yeah, we all need to connect and network and build relationship. And that's what we're all echoing. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Yeah, any other contribution? Alexander, Miss Toots, George, and Tim well, also. Anyway. Yeah, this is Tim. Right. See, you just crushed it. That, that's great information. A couple of key tactical in, uh, examples that I had. So last year, from resorts to SaaS, software as a service. Uh, right away, I got my resume updated. I hired a 
resume writer. I got it done. It was important to me. That's step number one. Number two, I networked with my past employees, my clients. I really did a self-assessment. I called, I reached out to different clients that I work with. I got really, really uh, great feedback, great positive and productive, right? So get that scorecard out. Number three, get involved with opportunities for, for networking, different groups online, LinkedIn. You, know, you don't have to be active right away. Uh, that's a number one tip. Make sure that you're interacting with the right communities first. Do a little bit of research and know what's going to be the best uh, networking opportunity for you. <clears throat> and then get a certification. You know, there's LinkedIn Learning platform. There's uh, a bunch of different resources out there. A lot of content for free. Uh, an example that I did was I got my customer success management certification. And that is a big thing in SaaS and customer success field right now. Um, there's several out there, but I'm coming from a whole different industry from hotels, hospitality, with a very large company into different industry. Again, tactical, really firsthand examples. This is coming from someone who is living and breathing it right now. Okay. Feel free to reach out to me. It was a big change. I'm coming from a company that's 80,000 plus to roughly about a hundred and it's scary, right? But there's opportunity. And at the end of the day, I'm learning something and that's great. Um, but you definitely got to stay positive. And at the end of the day, if you try, you, know, you don't have so much to lose. I mean, keep trying, push forward. Keep that fresh mindset, stay positive, and every day is a new day. Uh, so if you have any questions, reach out to me. I want to give the opportunity for others that are on this platform right now to speak. Uh, and reach out to me if you have any questions. This is Tim, and I'm done. I'll pass the mic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tim. We really appreciate the, that all your inputs. Very, very important that you keep pushing forward. Don't put yourself in a box. Keep searching for jobs and definitely your job will come to you. Thank you so much for the inputs. Any other contribution? Hi, this is Alex. Um, my name is Alexandria. Uh, I am a tech recruiter with Mintech Agency. Um, and I just wanted to add, well, for one, everybody, like, since I've been here, everyone has given, you know, such great advice. Um, and so I just kind of want to reiterate some of those things, you know, definitely be intentional with the people that you reach out to. Um, if you're, if you have the opportunity to be able to reach out to, you know, I think one thing that um, this pandemic has shown us is that it's important to be ready. Um, because you never know what's going to happen. So um, one thing that, you know, I learned over the past year in my own job search is, you know, make as many connections as possi possible. But like C said, um, definitely be intentional and make sure that you have a plan and you're executing your plan when you are, you know, reaching out to people and you're messaging people. Um, you know, don't make connections just to, you know, have a bunch of connections, but make sure that you're building relationships with those connections so like I said you're ready um I think that you know that's definitely something that COVID has shown us is that we you know we have to be ready because we never know what's going to happen um you know there are people who have been in you know companies for years and you know their job was secure in January of last year and in February and March, you know, they were furloughed or uh, unemployed. So I think it's so important to be ready if you're able to. And if you're currently on the job search, just be, um, be intentional, but also be clear and, um, you know, be genuine. Um, I know a lot of people, you get a lot of people who reach out and we don't know what they, as a recruiter, I don't know what they want. Um, you know, they don't have that message. Um, they haven't looked at our job board. 
but they're reaching out to me, telling me that they're looking for work or they're interested in working with my company and they don't have a clue what jobs that we post. So um, I would also say, you know, if you are currently on the market or looking for something, you know, come, you know, as correct as possible to recruiters and to other individuals at companies you want to work with. I think everybody wants to help everybody, but sometimes it can be a little bit more difficult when, you know, that person isn't clear about what they're looking for. Um, so like C said, be prepared um, and come with what you want. Um, this is Alex, I'm done speaking. So, hey, Tammy, so it's good to see you. I just wanted to tack something on real quick to what Alexandra said, and she's so spot on. So she's coming from it as a reporter standpoint. I'm coming from it as a person that runs a job post uh, and does a clubhouse event that gets over 15,000 people every week. And the thing about it is that when people are asking me for help, a lot of times I'll look at their about section or the profile heading and they'll have like 15 different job titles that they're looking for or on their job or on my job post, they're not specifying what they want, which is to Alexander's point. And I don't want to say that people have gotten lazy, but I do think that the pandemic has provided this thing where they've breached this wall and they're all, and at times, and I don't mean to sound offensive, they're only willing to put in so much work to get to, get to where they want. I mean, it gets to a certain point that you go on the LinkedIn job board and you see the easy apply, and it, it's easy. And and that's what they want to do instead of spending the time. And as a fellow job seeker myself, I've spent 15 hours per day, in addition to being a full-time father, to work my tail off to get to the point where just now I'm getting uh, to be able to say to Alexandria or somebody else, hey, uh, can I get a referral to this company? And I'm, and I'm getting it. And this is over five months. This is not a slow process. So uh, again, you know, it's one of those things where we need to bootstrap ourselves and we can get back in the habit of what do we really need to do? Uh, to get ourselves back in an employee and, and what can we do to uh, to take that next step? And then you got to do it. My name's Dana. Hey, Ms. Tabby, thank this you so is Chris much. Boston. I'm just going to jump in real quick. So um, thank you as always for holding the space and being on stage. I'm actually in LinkedIn recruiter. So during this whole time, there's been some great shares. And as I'm like looking for an opportunity to jump in, I'm just on recruiter replying to folks. So I'm going to give you a real world example. I've been able to book six meetings uh, with six different candidates. And I have one candidate that I replied to eight times that just keeps asking me question after question after question after question about this role. And you know, it's fine. And I'm trying to answer them. But I don't know this candidate and I can't differentiate them from the other candidates. But if the client was like, hey, who's flexible? Probably the candidate. I had an email eight times to book a meeting that I <laughs> just took one email for everybody else may not be that same candidate, right? So just realize there's a real person at the other end of the line. I like going after Dan because we both got kids. I'm always at work. But, you know, here's the thing. My best, so I'll give three comments. So one, update your bio. If you're looking for a job, if I click on your bio and it doesn't say I'm looking for this one job, then I don't think you're really searching on Clubhouse, right? So if you're on Clubhouse, you know, just make it simple. Update your bio. You can update your bio for each room. If you're looking for a specific job, literally just put it at the top of your bio and that'll be helpful. Follow people and follows are not forever. You could follow me. If I'm not helpful with your search, unfollow me. But if you follow me and I follow you back, you'll see the rooms that I'm in. And most likely somebody in that room will be able to help. It may not be me, but it may be somebody else. And, you know, like I said, if you build a relationship with a recruiter, we all talk. I can tell you that I was probably, up, you know, very early, late, however you want to look at it yesterday with a bunch of people from this room. Right. And, you know, I have total confidence that if one of them was like, hey, here's a candidate you have to meet, you know, I would respond. So. I would say, you know, apply the knowledge, don't make it harder than it needs to be, create a relationship and then just have trust that if you build that relationship, you know, that person will do their best. 
good about working with candidates that they can't place. So it's it's everyone's goal to want to make sure you get placed. You just got to make sure that's truly your number one goal. I'm Chris from Boston. I'm done speaking. Wow, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, making a relationship, putting whatever you're looking for, the job on your bio is very important. Make sure your bio is up to date. Yes, you echo and everything that we are all saying the same thing. Thank you so much. That hopefully people that are seeking for a job will be able to understand this and note it. Thank you so much. Um, Thank Chris, tell me, would it be okay if I shared something with everybody here today? Yes, please go ahead. So is it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you all something that I really haven't told anyone on LinkedIn or on, uh, or on Clubhouse until today right now. So earlier this year, I was actually furloughed for six weeks. And that, you know, and, and C is absolutely right. These are unconventional times. You've got to do what you've got to do. And when I realized that this was real, and, and I, you know, I work in oil and gas, so I knew this was probably coming. And so that for me was the jump start to say everything that everyone pretty much up here has already said, that's, those are the things that I've had to do to get to the point where when I actually interviewed with an organization that was one of my target companies, I had 10 connections at that company and I knew them well enough to call and get on the phone and say, hey, tell me, what are the things that I should be asking about? What are the things that you find most interesting and that you like about the culture? All of those things that you really want to know before you go into an interview. But it took me a few months to do that. So absolutely, it's not, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I think when you're under pressure to try to find a job, and so thankfully, you know, the furlough wasn't permanent, but it was enough of a jumpstart for me to actually run out and do everything that everyone's saying. And it is real and it does take time. So the sooner you start, then the farther along you'll, you'll be when the time comes. But I just wanted to share that with everybody because the reason I'm here talking about this is because, you know, one, I am going through it. And two, I'm actually seeing a lot of the benefits of the you know, the, the advice that the people on the stage are sharing because they, they've seen it firsthand and they've been doing all this a lot longer than me. Um, but I just wanted to share that. No one, no one's known that. I've never actually shared that before, but I just wanted to let you all know. And that's why it's so important for me now to be up here and talking about it because I've, I've been there and I know what it's like and it's not fun. But I also know that there are things I can do, very specific, tangible things and actions that I can take. And to be able to be the one in the driver's seat and not having things done to me is such a huge boost in confidence. When I show up to interviews, people see that and, you know, it comes across. So definitely anything you can do to be in control of your situation and take charge and make the best of the resources around you like this room and the articles like Tim says that are out there in YouTube videos, just do it, take it all in and make a plan, map it out for yourself. Everyone's plan looks different, but those steps and the willingness to do that is what you really have to find and then just, and just do it. And so I'm, and again, I'm, I'm sharing this because I want you all to know that it, it's real um, and I'm Robert and I'm done. Thank you so much, Robert. And um, it's very important that we, Hopefully, we are writing some some of these points down. Like you sharing your experience with us, this is huge. Thank you for making yourself vulnerable. So at least people get to know that they are going through the same thing. Some people are also going through the same thing. So if you can successfully get a job with this kind of situation, anybody can get a job as well. So we just have to make sure we have a strategy. We have to be consistently connecting and building a relationship with others, and the rest will be history. So thank you so much for sharing that. I know we have new people joining us. Oh, George, go ahead. Then Jamel is there yeah. some other people. Thank yeah. you, Tammy, uh, for hosting. I'm going to be quick. Uh, so let other you know, uh, folks. So I'm going to make a recommendation, right? I, I work for IBM, and I encourage everyone uh, who is looking to take a look at, of course, uh, you know, in the IT you know, space, right, to take a look at the IBM job website do a search, see if you can find anything, you know, you can, uh, you feel like you, you, you can apply to. And uh, if you need help, then you can also reach out to me. Now, myself is not a recruiter. And, uh, you know, I currently, my group, uh, my team does not have job openings. However, they are plenty of job openings within IBM. You know, it's a big company, right? Uh, you know, worldwide, in fact. So uh, that's why I want to encourage everybody to take a look. I mean, typically the job openings in within IBM range, range from you know entry level to experience high to college high. There are opportunities for veterans. There are opportunities for you know um, uh, high school students. So there are tons of opportunity. I encourage everybody to take a look at. Thank you. Thanks, Tammy. I'm done. Thank you, George. We truly, truly appreciate you. So. Guys, make sure you follow them. IBM is here and so many other companies are all 
here, make sure you follow them and they are here to, to help you. So when you meet these um, moderators, make sure you follow them. Follow them to their LinkedIn page, follow them to their, LinkedIn is, most people probably want you to be on LinkedIn now instead of Instagram, I think. So follow them to their LinkedIn page, introduce yourself. If you're looking for a job on, I, in, for example, on IBM website, make sure you understand the job and then you can give the information to George, he might be able to connect you. And that's how you have to network and build a relationship. Introduce yourself to them and just follow them around, you know, kind of in the clubhouse and stuff. Clubhouse is a big thing for us. We shouldn't be looking for a job without getting any job. This clubhouse has done like 40 or 50% of the help for jobs because without clubhouse, I don't know, but with clubhouse, everything is possible. So thank you so much, George, for that. And I know we have Jamal. Jamal, do you have any input or any questions for us? We can't hear you very well. What about now? Yes, it's better. It's better now. Okay, so um, I just joined the group today, so coming in today. Um, I am network administrator. John, can you speak louder? Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm a network administrator and I work for a financial institution here in Nigeria. Um, um, and I've been, uh, I've been, I've been with the company for more than five years now uh, without um, referrals and stuff. Um, I feel I'm part at um, what they call it, uh, keeping tabs with my connections and stuff. So um, getting to understand how connections, uh, how important connections can be from this uh, forum uh, after listening for about 15, 20 minutes, I think uh, I will have to step up my game. I just want to appreciate uh, the moderators uh, for uh, explaining and uh, talking about experiences. I think it's going to help me uh, uh, bring out my A game in following up with my connections and stuff. So, thank you. Yeah, thank I'm going to follow up. Uh, I'm going to follow uh, most of the moderators, or probably all the moderators on things and stuff. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So that's very good. Thank you for that. And um, it's very important that we follow the moderators and um, follow them immediately because they may not stay on, on here for too long. And sometimes if you decide to write it down, don't follow them, you might forget. So what I do is that each room, when I write it down, I follow them immediately because I don't want to forget what I want to discuss with them. So that's really good. Thank you so much, Jamel. Um, so next we have, uh, see, Poria, is it Poria, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, I guess the English is very real, but I speak uh, because I'm uh, Turkish. So uh, in, during the Corona, uh, so uh, as first I want to study, I'm a physics student, uh, and uh, when the uh, when Corona comes and university closed, I started to uh, read a book or train, uh, more training uh, to, uh, and try to study machine learning with the AI. And after one year, uh, I, now I am the head of the core P artificial intelligence and machine learning work group. And uh, this, um, pro, uh, this, um, I don't know how can I say in English <laughs> and, um, uh, uh, when I study physics, because physics is so hard and we don't have enough time to work in and we don't have money uh, when university close and uh, we have a free time uh, we uh, enduring Corona, uh, I start to uh, reading and after I, I give a project uh, to AI or machine learning, especially machine vision, uh, vision uh, or uh, bioinformatics projects. I grow up and uh, now I have one company uh, named Corpy. Uh, you can search in uh, Telegram uh, because uh, our South under DDoS uh, attacked and it's out of order. Um, yeah, or you can uh, follow my LinkedIn. Uh, you can search on Google. My name is Kareka uh, You can see my um, uh, CV before Corona and after Corona. Corona helped us to 
make money, to study more, to find a new uh, ability. And uh, I don't know, maybe it is a uh, bad happening uh, for her, but I think it is not bad. Uh, maybe uh, it help us to grow up and I, I don't know how can I say in English. So that is, thank you to give it time for me. Thank you so much. Wow. So you use it, um, even though coronavirus and the pandemic is a difficult situation, but we, you try to make a positive use of it. So you use your time wisely, have a strategy to um, grow yourself in your skill set as well. And with this COVID situation, now you have your own company and things are better. So that is exactly what I said before, right? I said during this time, there's so much opportunity out there, opportunity that you can even turn your hobbies into profitable ventures, like I mentioned earlier, and that's exactly what you did. So that's a very good example. Thank you so much for that. And I wish you best and luck as you go on with your career. It's very nice to You're see welcome. you. And you are also new to Clubhouse. So Clubhouse is actually a great place to be. So make sure you network with people of like mind. Today I go to Clubhouse and it is, Clubhouse is so interesting. Uh, yes, yes, it's very interesting. So you find a lot of rooms like this and rooms like with AI and all that machine learning that you can link with people and connect with them. And so thank you so much. And you are in the right path because that's very hot right now. So I really appreciate your joining us. Thank you. So we have- you're welcome, thank you. Yes, so we have Sarah. Sarah, welcome. Do you have any question or do you have any inputs? Hi, yeah. Um, so I am kind of in the middle of a career shift into um, IT. So I'm getting certified as a full stack developer at the moment. Um, and so my question is, I know there's a lot of recruiters in the room, a lot of hiring managers. Um, so for the past, you know, 10 years, I've had a video production company and it's been like pretty successful, uh, but I started it in college just because I didn't know what, what I wanted as a career. And so I built up this video company and it's, you know, it's relatively successful. It's fine, but I'm getting it to the point where it can be like completely automated and I don't necessarily need to be involved in the day-to-day -day operations anymore. So I'll kind of be like a silent owner and pass along the company to my team. Um, so my question is like, when looking for a new job, how, like, how would you quantify entrepreneurial experience? And is it a turnoff for recruiters to say like, yes, I have this company that I'm not really involved in, but I am the owner of it, but it runs itself and I'm looking for other employment opportunities. Like what, how would you navigate a situation like that? Hey, Sarah, uh, this is Dan. So first of all, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm actually sourcing for some full stack developers right now. Um, you know, that's an interesting question that you bring up. I think that intrinsically this comes down to what we all talk about uh, as far as informational interviews and being targeted in your approach. Uh, when you are, you're more likely to develop relationships and through those relationships and interpersonal communications, it's not going to come across uh, in the way that you probably perceive that it will. Instead, it will become an asset and a transferable skill because not even though you may be new to full stack development, the reality is that you have an ability uh, through running your own company to communicate effectively to other people, which especially in the IT world is, is such a valuable asset because there's a lot of people that just can't break some of the more complex problems down and simplify it into understandable uh, language for the average person like me. So I think that you have a lot going for you. I, I kind of get the sense that that you may question that, but uh, I really do think that you have more power to you than you may otherwise think. My name is Dan and I am complete. Yeah, thank you so much, Dan. Exactly what I want to say too, because 
Um, Sarah, um, being an entrepreneur is a plus for any organization because you have the energy, you have the spirit to run your company. That's great. And that's a positive spirit as well. So you have probably have a lot of transferable skills that you can put on there as a support. And if you work on your company, if you've been doing some things with your company, that's a plus because you are not just not doing anything. You are supporting your company. You are So my, if it's similar to what you're looking for, you probably can put on your resume because you are actually doing something. So it's, it's, those are past performance too. So they can be on your resume and stuff. So don't think it's a negative thing. I think you, sh you can use that a lot. So I think C also want to say something. I'll give the mic to C. Hey, C. C and I have actually been talking on Instagram. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, yeah. because I saw that she's trying to say something, but maybe I said the same thing. All right. Hey, uh, Sarah, I just wanted to add that, um, you know, early in your search or your um, conversation with anyone about a job opportunity, there's two different ways you could go about it. Uh, if you think that just from what you've learned about the job on your own, that it could potentially be a conflict of some sort. Um, after doing thorough research about the organization, I would highly recommend. Then I wouldn't probably um, present it early in the, you know, um, conversation stage with a hiring manager. I mean, with a recruiter. But if you think it's potentially something that could support you actually being. Um, a more marketable candidate for that role uh, where you can see that there's transferable skills or there's direct um, you know skill sets that you're bringing along that fulfill the requirements or you know in some way or another are going to make you shine more then I would definitely say add it to your resume and that way um, you know you kind of will know upfront whether or not that's something that they're receptive to because if they're receptive to it then They'll definitely engage about it, but if not, then somewhere along the lines during the conversation, you know, you will um, be able to determine that. So um, I definitely think it's a major, major plus. Something that I do notice a lot is that um, a lot of candidates have that information on their uh, resumes, and I, I, I haven't so far um, experienced where that has been like a con you know, like an issue, like, again, I said, unless it's like a conflict of interest and that you can probably determine I'm doing research about the organization. This is and I'm done speaking. Thank you. Yeah. I think one of my big questions as well is like, should I let them know that I do own a business on the side? Although I'm not really in the day to day anymore. So yeah, I think that's getting too deep into the you know the weeds. But again, you can present it on your resume as something that you're currently doing. You don't have to you know um, you don't have to identify that you're the owner. You know, it could just be what you're currently um, doing in terms of employment, uh, just working. And um, if you want to add on there in terms of your title, owner or founder. I don't think, again, that there's anything harmful in doing that, but I think you're going to really have to gauge in those initial conversations if one does present itself, whether or not that would be a conflict of interest. And um, I, I, don't, I don't think that it'll take you long to determine that because either the recruiter will be very straightforward about it or um, you'll get a strong sense of that when you're doing your research about the organization. I always say that research in an organization does not mean just going to their website. You know, you have Yelp, you have LinkedIn, you have Glassdoor, you have Indeed, like, you know, you have other um, sources online. You know, make sure that you're diversifying your search about that organization. You also have um, Clubhouse. You know, you have Twitter. You can engage with some of the um, employees. Sometimes they're, they're like the head of different um, organizations that are affiliated with that organization or, um, you know, employee resource, resource groups that are, you know, just placing content out there in the universe. So, you know, diversify your research, but I definitely think that it would be an asset. I think that it would definitely put you in a different light to show your leadership, collaboration, your entrepreneurial um, skills, your self-starter. 
So I don't think it would be anything bad, but I don't know if I would get into the ownership part until you really get a clear understanding of the role and most importantly, the organization's interest in you. This is C and I'm done speaking. Yeah, I don't think I will also say this my company too, because I remember when I was still working full time and I had already had my company, I don't mention my company. I just be quiet looking at whatever they're doing because sometimes it might be conflict of interest. If they, if, if you know, if you get to know them more and then there's a need maybe for something that is relating to you and you know the manager, you know the culture, you know the it won't be against you. Then you might let them know. But in most cases, I'll just say, don't say anything because you never know what kind of people they are and, or maybe they can be, you know, envious or jealous or I don't, you don't know. So you don't just say anything about your company that is yours. Just wait to see. But the time will come for your company to be known, it will be known. So there's no rush, you know, about that. The first thing is getting the job and, um, and you can always go from there. <laughs> Robert, want to um, say something? So, yeah, so, so Robert, I was going to ask maybe Tammy and see maybe get your thoughts on this because I think the thing that jumps to mind or comes to mind for me when I when I hear Sarah speak about this is you know if we have on our resume key strengths, one things I think that I've heard people say, um, especially for people in the tech industry, is that if you've got team leadership or ability to manage customers and interface and really things that can highlight your ability to work with people, that that can actually be a key differentiator. So it may not be that you say. So much that you're an owner. Or actually, I like the idea of putting founder, and especially when I see that on a LinkedIn profile, it does attract attention. People notice. But what I would say is, if you can almost transfer that to you know, distill it down to, it would your you know your key strengths or your key key skills that you might put of the four or five things or whatever that you highlight on the resume. Maybe team leadership or customer management or stakeholder management might be uh, you know specific things that you could potentially highlight. And then you could always use examples of you know from the real world and your actual you know entrepreneur experience to say, yep, I've led a team do these types of changes or what have you. But that's what I was going to maybe point out. It may be more of the skill set. And those can definitely be applied. Uh, and I've actually been able to do that uh, for me because I have a non-traditional, I have a chemical engineering background and I've worked in uh, you know, chemicals, oil and gas and energy. But I was able to actually speak to a lot of things for um, an, IT, an IT role because of the transferable things. So, um, and that's actually kind of a tactic and strategy that I use. But, I just wanted to see what Emmy and C thought about maybe doing that to highlight. So I think those would be really good strengths. I'm Robert and I'm done. Yes, most definitely. It's very great to highlight those transferable skills on your resume and everywhere so that they will know that you have those skills like we mentioned earlier. Thank you, Robert. That's also very important. I think Sarah, are, um, are you satisfied? Are, you, are we able to answer your questions? Yes, yes, that was all so very helpful. Thank you all so much. Okay, thank you. And also I have some other inputs um, as we continue. Uh, updating your digital presence, like C mentioned, like everybody also mentioned. Um, it's always good to write insightful articles around your area of expertise. For example, if your area of, of expertise is like cybersecurity or coding or data analysis or project management, use your LinkedIn pro profile. Everyone is on LinkedIn. Um, the recruiters are on LinkedIn. Write insightful articles. If you see anything that is great insightful or maybe the recruiters are discussing something, go in there and come, you know, add a great comment. And, um, you know, and also in these rooms in the, in, in the clubhouse, um, you know, go in there and if you have any input, great input, go in there, introduce yourself and give an input they get to notice you and also say, by the way, I'm looking for a job. You know, because I've seen this, right? There's a particular situation, one of the big rooms here on, on, the, on the clubhouse. So there's a lady that's always, so when they discuss, she's always summarizing things. And then when they finish the clubhouse, she'll go on, on LinkedIn and put it out. Oh, I was in so and so, -and -so room and this is what we discussed. Like I like the point and then copy and uh, tag those people that were in the rooms. She got a job, she's working, she's doing well now. She was looking for a job. So this club also can do so much with it. And also I noticed some people also, they're all looking for jobs. They came together and create rooms whereby they said, 
the job seeker also helping job seekers. Guess what? Recruiters are gonna come in there and see they're doing a great job. They help them from there. So I've seen a lot in this clubhouse. So this is a, actually a great deal. And also if you do coding or programming, make sure you show your projects. Um, you can, there's a, a site called GitHub and so many other sites like that. Add your coding there, add your code there, your sample, what you have done, the website you created, add it on there and let that showcase you. Because when they can see all of those things, when they do technical interviews and asking for your work, you can, you can point them to those uh, sites, what you have done. You know, if you do graphic design, create great graphics and show it up on, on LinkedIn, on, you know, like a project or profile area where they can see it and then create blogs. If you, you can blogs and discuss, you know, technical stuff. All these are great plus for you. When you're looking for a job, it's just make it easy for you. So that's very important. And also make sure you practice tough questions because this can actually make you or break you. Like in this room, you always see us discussing about interviews. Um, there are different types of interview. We have the um, situational interviews, behavioral interviews and technical interviews, right? So make sure you practice those situations. Um, some website like Glassdoor, they have a review interview questions that are very tough. You can go in there and learn about your skills, your area of expertise. Make sure you practice these questions. Um, also make sure you understand how to deliver uh, in, um, interviews using Zoom, using videos. How do you look on videos? Do you look away or do you not look straight to the camera or things like that? So make sure you practice and see how you look and how things are before the interview and master the, your, your brand during your interview, um, you know, in your Zoom interviews. Make sure that you, you, you show passion. Don't just lay back and relax too much. You, you want to show that you are ready to learn, you are willing to learn and let it come true to them that you are passionate about your role. So like I was telling my student yesterday was one of the classes last day. So I was telling them, show your passion. Use your, hand, use your hand gesture if you have to. Let them know that you're ready to learn and you are passionate about the role. So it's very good that you practice all of these things ahead of time. And, um, and as well as, I also want to mention that the job will not fall onto your lap immediately. You might not get it right away. Nothing happened right away. Because some people, when they apply for a job and then they can't get the job right away, they get panicking and they get negative. Maybe I will not get a job. Well, there are so many jobs. You're going to get a job. But just like C said, work with your strategy. Develop a scorecard and make sure you work with it. You know, do your check-ins. Keep applying for this job every time. Open, you know, be open jobs and understand these opportunities will come. But you have to remain positive and have an improve and positive outlook towards it, and keep searching. Don't get depressed and get, uh, uh, you know, like uh, sad that it's not coming fast enough. Your job will come. You just have to be consistent and follow your strategy. And I will stop right there. I want to welcome Aklesh to uh, Miss Aklesh. Thanks for coming. And do you have any question or any inputs? We're discussing the taxes for landing jobs during the uh, COVID-19. Um, thank you for joining us. If you have any questions or any inputs. Um, Tammy, thank you so much for the opportunity. So uh, sorry for being late, uh, but I just want to add some uh, points to for the attendees. Uh, like when it comes to finding jobs in times like these, I think uh, there are a few key highlighters which I want to mention. Uh, first and foremost, LinkedIn is a great place to identify and uh, having the jobs because now most of the jobs which are being published are published uh, onto LinkedIn and uh, make sure that you have a great uh, LinkedIn profile, utilize each and every section. Uh, second, what I would suggest is in whichever industry or vertical you're planning to apply for the jobs, uh, do have a career strategy that which are the top 25 companies you want to apply. Uh, depending on your skills, which you are in on the roles you had worked in the past uh, relevant years of uh, industry or the work experience, uh, do apply accordingly. I mean, um, not applying for every jobs is not the agenda, but applying for a right role depending on 
whichever the role you are applying for you could always see there are some matching skills which it tries to showcase you for a particular job position so keep that in mind i think that will be of help uh, for you to identify to apply for various roles and and it is very much important to understand that there are some uh, product based companies there are companies which are focusing on services so i mean we should just keep these things in mind while applying and i mean can you i'll be more than happy to add in case if you have any specific questions further thank you thank you aklesh we really appreciate you coming to join us today we really appreciate it thank you so much uh, shout out to all my students. I see a lot of you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. If you have any question, please come up and ask your question, even as we round up to close the room. So please raise your hand if you have any question and um, to come and ask your questions. Ask the, meet, meet the experts. So this is Meet the Experts series. Follow the, the moderators, follow the room. We always meet here every Sunday at 4 p.m. and we'll be coming back next week for more insightful topics. So I really want to thank Katie, C, Robert, George, Sarah, Aklesh, and so many. We actually had a, a full room. Thank you all so much and people that are left. I'm so, I so much appreciate all your support. Coming together to support our community is very key and thank you for what you're doing. You never know how this is affecting a lot of lives. You are changing lives one day at a time. I really want to appreciate you all. So as we close, I will start with Aklish. Let's just go all the way up and just give a short advice or tips or encouragement to people that are looking for a job. I know people are already going through so much and the people are frustrated. Some people are frustrated, but just give them a quick advice how they should be positive and continue to search. We just give them a, um, you know, advise them as we close the, uh, try to close the room down. We start with Aklesh, then we go to Sarah, George, Robert, C, Katie, and I'll close the room. So let's do that. If one, one quick advice and encouragement for the job seekers. Aklesh. Thanks, Kami. Uh, first of all, I just want to, I mean, uh, share with the audience that uh, I'm a coach and a mentor. So in case, like Tammy, as you mentioned, we are some of the students. So in case if any one of you is interested to, to get into the tech world, uh, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and I'll be more than happy because uh, in times like these, technology is going to accelerate. Uh, digital way of working is something which is a new normal. So, I mean, Getting into the tech world could be the best uh, decision which one can take in times like these. Uh, what I would advise as a takeaway is like in times like these, uh, we must uh, try to understand that there are so many job seekers who are seeking to transition or identify their next uh, opportunity. So we must stay patient and apply for the right jobs which will help us in uh, landing uh, the right opportunities for us. So we need to just make sure that we are staying patient and uh, just applying for the right roles. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aklish. And uh, George, any last word encouragement for people that are, look, that are still looking? Yeah, I just want to encourage everybody to reach out. I know a lot of people actually, you know, here and even people who are not here who are willing to help, right? If you reach out. If, if, you know, everybody understand the challenge the job seeker is facing during the pandemic. And we we feel the pain. And I think a lot of people are willing to help if you reach out. So I encourage everyone. Thank you. Thank you, George. Really appreciate you. Robert, any advice, encouragement? Um, I'm going to say a few quick things on LinkedIn. So I think I'm assume that for most everybody has this, but if you don't, make sure you have your open to work turned on, at least for recruiters. If you are if you are job seeking and you do have a job, at least open it up for recruiters. You may not want your employer to see that. Um, another thing is you can list actually um, up to five locations where you may want job notifications. So if you're using job notifications, just keep in mind that you don't have to just limit them to where you're living. If there are other locations where you might want to work and, you're, and you know that it's maybe going to be good for the, you know, something like um, Bay Area or, you know, something like that, or New York or Chicago, places where there are tech hubs uh, where you could find jobs and you're okay moving, make sure that you leave those open as well or select those in your LinkedIn uh, when you go into the settings for job notifications and job searches. And then also make sure that whatever the title it is that you want in your link in LinkedIn profile is actually there in your title up at the very top. So, um, 
so that's one thing I did as well. So I, I made sure that the type of job that I was looking for was there. So that way, when people look, they see that right away. So like, it's just a few tips and um, hopefully that's helpful for someone. I'm Robert and I'm done speaking. Wow, thank you so much, Robert. And then we're trying to close the room down. So the, any last tip, encouragement for job seekers? Absolutely, and thank you. I'm sorry I had to step out for a minute. Uh, the biggest tip that I talk about with job seekers is not about how you go about finding a job, but is what to do when you get the interview. The way that you do this is think within yourself and find what your niche is. What is your unique voice that separates you from everybody else? And then write about it. Do a post, do a thought, whether it's out in public or by yourself. Once you realize what's going to separate you from everybody else, a lot of the nervousness that goes on within those interviews dissipates because you know what your voice is and your voice is what's going to carry you to that job more than anything. Thank you. My name is Dan. I'm done speaking. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Uh, Christopher, I just jump in. I uh, thank you for coming back. Um, we're giving, we're class trying to close down the room. So Christopher, if you can, do you have any word of advice, the last word of advice for people that are still looking for job, encouragement? Yeah, I'm outside, so hopefully the wind's not too bad, but it's uh, just stay motivated, right? Like, uh, I think I've heard this mentioned a couple different ways. The job search is hard, so I think uh, no matter if you're on the candidate side, company side, recruiter side, it's difficult. So just know that um, we, we need to have a sense of empathy for each other, but, you know, your biggest thing is activity. If you're not being active with your job search, you're not going to get a job, so... Be active, take notes, know who you're reaching out to, give them a little grace and you'll get a little grace back. I'm Chris from Boston. I'm done speaking. Wow, thank you so much. See, what's your advice, encouragement for people that are still seeking? So the first tip I will give you or first recommendation is self-care. If you're not prepared, you're not ready, just feeling overwhelmed, anxious, then you don't want to start your job search because you're just going to become more and more frustrated. Second, put together a plan. It does not have to be a five page, one page plan. Just have an idea of the type of roles you want to pursue, the type of organizations, look at their requirements overall, just so you can gain a better sense so that you can structure your resume to meet those requirements. Spray and pray, which is a phrase meaning you're just going to apply for whatever job you see and you're just not really putting in any effort and you're just hoping that, you know, the fairy um, godmother recruiter will pick it up. Um, I think is good if you're just like, you know, not really serious about your search. But uh, if you have a goal or you're in a situation where you need to find a job in a short period of time, then you definitely want to take a more structured, strategic approach. So again, you're making sure that your digital presence is up to par. You are networking regularly, building relationships with individuals that are in your field, in your industry, um, posting content. You know, you're really trying to get to someone who can help either give you the information that you're going to need if you do get the opportunity to have an uh, interview, or they're just going to give you the right tips so that you can try to gain an interview. Again, I go back to my first point, self-care. A job definitely is needed, is essential, but you're not going to drive yourself insane trying to get a job opportunity. There are many opportunities out here and one is going to fall on your lap, but you wanna make sure that you're prepared, not just prepared with a digital presence, not just prepared with a network, not just prepared with an excellent resume. You're ready to speak, speak the language, answer those questions, nail them. You're answering them in the format that that organization likes. Every organization is different. Um, just to give you an example, Google likes the star method. Google star method. Um, you know, Amazon is a little bit more structured. They like to know that you have looked at their mission and values. You know, they focus on that. So, you know, put in the, you know, do your homework, learn the organization, and then start applying. Um, the last piece of advice I would give is have fun. I, I mean, 
get out of that mindset where, oh, this is so overwhelming or so much work. Do it at your own pace. I mean, you are the person that knows your timeline. You are the person that knows your goals. You're the person that knows what you, what you want. You know, peruse of a profile. Speak to people that are in roles that you're, um, you know, interested in. Like, do your homework. Um, one thing for me, I not only look to bring value, I look for value. So I'm not going to put in a bunch of effort to look for a job opportunity and not be prepared to ask or answer questions so that I can get the opportunity. So be strategic and intentional and have fun while doing it. This is C and I'm done speaking. Wow, C, thank you so much for a powerhouse. I really appreciate those. And you actually frame everything and summarize everything for us. I really appreciate you, ma'am. Thank you and, and, so much. And one more thing. You can follow me. You can DM me. You can ask me questions. I've been doing that since I've been on Clubhouse now for about a month. My game, that's what I call it, because to me, job search is very similar to a game, um, is free. I've been through it. I want to help. That is my mission. I'm done speaking. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Katie, your input, your um, quick advice. As we round up, is Katie there? Okay. Yeah, I, yep, I'm here. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, I definitely want to put out the good vibes of encouragement because I've also been in your shoes. Um, I know it's frustrating and overwhelming and stressful, particularly if you have a family or other people that you're responsible for. Um, and I want to echo a couple things that C said, which is work at your own pace. If you're feeling stressed out, you know, uh, putting in 10 job applications every day, maybe narrow it down to, I'm going to do this three days a week. Or if I don't feel like doing it this day, I'm going to give myself some grace and allow myself to pick it back up tomorrow. I think that's super, super important and self-care as well. I would say um, the tip I want to leave behind, and I had to step out for a minute, so I don't know if this ever came up in the conversation. But especially if you're financially strapped, there are great opportunities for you to take on fractional or part-time or freelance or contract work. And that requires being a little bit creative. And I would urge you that if you're going to take on some type of contract work, that it is in line with um, what, what you'd like to be doing, right? To gain some more experience and make sure that it's relevant. I'll be 100% transparent and honest with you guys. When... COVID hit and we all shut down, people panicked and stopped spending money. I am a single mom business owner and I was feeling the pinch. And so I had to go outside of what I would normally do and do some contract work. I did some uh, company branding instead of personal branding. I did different types of writing that isn't resume, resume writing to build up my skills and to continue working and bring uh, revenue in until my mainstream of, of income from job seekers came in. So um, if you're feeling frustrated and you need to make ends meet or at least you know work towards that, I would encourage you to look for some of the, that part-time or uh, contractual work. Uh, this is Kate, I appreciate you having me here. Um, I am finished speaking, thanks. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, C, Robot, uh, Akli, Sarah, everyone here, all my students, all our supports. Oh, I really appreciate you all willing and staying with us up till now. Thank you so much. I hope you follow the, um, all the uh, moderators, the room, and everything like that. We all, we're always going to be meeting here every Sunday at uh, 4 p.m. I will see you again next week. Thank you so much. And in case you have any, you need any help with um, maybe any trying to get into tech and you have issues with it, and you need help with your resume, you know, somebody that can mentor or coach you, I, I'm willing to do that. And if you want to join any of my training classes coming up, I have cybersecurity classes, the lab class, Scrum Master classes coming up this May. Let me know and you're welcome to join. I can work with you on that. So I really thank you all for joining, for supporting. Thank you so much. And I wish you all a wonderful weekend. I know the weekend is over already. Have a wonderful week ahead <laughs> and stay blessed and see you all next week. Good night um, and stay blessed. Uh, Tammy, <laughs> just before we leave, I uh, mm -hmm. just want to share with everyone uh, something.
quick information that mm -hmm. uh, I'm a tech professional on the Salesforce side. Uh, so in case if anyone is interested in getting into the tech world on the Salesforce firm, it's a cloud-based product. Uh, so I have two organizations, one which is a women tech organization called Sheepforce Wave. It's a global women tech community wherein we have about 2000 plus women from 50 plus geographies. Uh, and there is one which is focused for the students and the newbies into the Salesforce world, which is called Hardforce Global. Uh, please connect with me on LinkedIn and I'll be more than happy to share more details. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Aklish. Really appreciate that input. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you all next week on Sunday. Have a wonderful day and stay blessed and stay safe as well. Bye bye. Thank you all so much. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.